It's that time of the week again. It's time for Programming by Stealth, and this is July 20th, 2024, and I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. This week is not going to be a traditional installment, but rather a tidbit episode, and it's not with Bart Bouchatz. It's with the wonderful Helma Vanderlinden. Welcome back to the show, Helma. Hi. Uh, it's great to be back. Well, you may remember that Helma is the person who took the bull by the horns and actually did the conversion of XK past WD from Perl to JavaScript. And she came on the show and talked to us about how she was uh, making that happen. She's also the person responsible for turning the Taming the Terminal podcast and show notes series into an actual book. But that's not what she's here to talk about today. Helma enjoyed the series that Bart did on JQ and uh, using it to query JSON, and she found a problem to be solved that is common to many people on the Mac. And so this is going to be a very Mac-centric episode, but she was able to solve it using JQ. So why don't you set up the problem to be solved for us, Helma? Okay. So, yeah. Um, I finally uh, bit the bullet and I bought a new laptop. And of Yay. course, this is one with Apple Silicon. Um, so they, they, I read somewhere that it's um, uh, not a good idea to migrate everything, including uh, the application. So I used migrate assi migration assistant to migrate all my documents, but uh, it was advised to uh, reinstall all the applications by hand. And of course, I don't have a big very up-to-date, very accurate mind map like you have. <laughs> um, I usually start very uh, diligently by jotting down everything I do. And then on the third day of installing and working and et cetera, I forget and uh, I don't, don't keep it up to date anymore. Yeah. To, to so, be fair, my mind map is up to date the day I do a migration. And then th six months later, a year later, it has to be updated. But at least I've got a baseline to work with that I've got the documentation yeah. of all the settings and everything that I do for all my apps. So it's not yeah. quite as, as anal as you've described. <laughs> it's close, but not quite. <laughs> well, yeah, for, for me, it's usually, oh, I haven't installed this app yet. And now I need to use it. So then I go ahead and install the app. So um, uh, this time I thought, what if I just do the migration myself? Uh, um, uh, the the use the migration assistant for the applications, and let's see how many of them are Intel only, and how many I could just you know move along um, without any worry. Uh, for that, I had to look into uh, system information, which of course was system profile. Yeah, in so the days. yeah, we've got into some fun confusion in just in trying to work on the show notes together because um, it used to be called System Profiler. It was under the Apple logo, and you went to I don't know, was it about this Mac? And then you can get to more information, or if you hold on the Option key and you go to the Apple, you can look at System Information that it's called now. But like with almost everything else, Apple did. Most of the terms got changed, but not everywhere. So you're going to end up hearing us kind of interchangeably say system profiler and system information. When we get to the terminal goodness, that's when we're going to have to say system profiler, even though that's the old terminology. Yeah. So in there yeah. under applications, you can see a list of your applications. And what kind of information can you see about those? Well, you can, uh, of course, you can see um, whether it's Intel or uh, or Universal or uh, Apple Silicon, which, of course, I didn't have on my Intel uh, laptop, um, uh, or other things. And you can see versions, and you can see uh, the date last modified. Um, but I quickly noticed that it's getting tedious to just click on every app and then check the information below. And of course... Well, you can uh, see it in the listing. If you, you can sort by kind and it'll show you oh, all of them and you can see them in yeah. order, which ones are which. But there's a lot of glop in there. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to take out. So I wanted to have a list where I, where I could, you know, do whatever I wanted with it. And of course, I had a lot of apps uh, installed on my on my old uh, laptop, and so the scroll 
bar was still there when the <laughs> the the window was full height and uh and I didn't want to scroll and and you so, probably oh, don't well. want to necessarily move everything either right you no, want to you want to sure. call it because it's it's like it's like packing up all your belongings and moving to a new house well no clean it out before you go yes leave yes, behind exactly yeah and uh you want to leave things behind and um uh, and of course, um, all the 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 Apple uh, applications that are already installed, you don't want to see them anymore in your list. Uh, because oh, you, you mean... don't have to install them anymore. You don't have to worry about those because they are already there. You mean like Apple Mail, Apple Notes, for example? Yeah. Okay. Or all contacts or whatever. Yeah. Oh, one more reason you don't want to do a full migration of your Intel apps is they'll probably work, but they'll run under emulation under Rosetta 2. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, but if they've got a universal version or an Al Apple Silicon version, then that's going to be better. Now, universal, yeah. that means it runs under, it, it's compiled for both, right? For Intel yes. and Apple Silicon? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's probably also twice the size. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point, and there may be a universal version or a uh, an Ap Apple Silicon uh, specific version. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, I thought, how am I going to get this information out of this window? And then I thought, isn't should is there any way to get this in a in a terminal window? Um, is there a command line interface for this one? Or can I, you know, call an API or whatever? So I uh, I searched online and I found that there is a, a simple command line interface called system underscore profiler. And uh, if you run that, you get all the information that you can see in the... Uh, in the various sections of system information. Cool. Yeah, so I thought, okay, if I can get that, and then I was fully prepared to, you know, uh, copy and paste, and uh, but that got tedious. And I, I thought, well, if it's a command line interface, there's probably a help argument. So if you type system underscore profiler, space dash dash help you'll get a a, a listing of everything you can do and, leave it to um, apple to not have it be an, have a man page right yeah okay yeah well i didn't even look at the man page i just looked at the uh, the help output of the of the command itself right and i and i noticed two things one is um uh, you can give um a certain data type and two is you can export in JSON. Oh. And then I thought, now the fun begins. <laughs> <laughs> so let me back you up a little bit. If you just type yeah. system profiler, you get a lot more information than just the applications. You get everything that's in system information? Yes. So like yes. your your section that you pasted in there from, from running the command starts with accessibility, cursor magnification on, display black on white, flash green off, this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's I kind of cool. The output is just it, where, in my case, I don't know if it's universal, but um, in my case, it starts with accessibility and gives you all the information. So if you would go into system information and you would check the accessibility uh, section, you'd probably see the same information. So that's something else that might be fun to go take a look at, right? Yep. Just what are all your accessibility settings? How much are you using accessibility, for example? Okay. Yeah. Or what are like all, so, all my network my network devices? What's yeah. connected over USB? Yeah. Ooh. So that's maybe maybe that would be something for you as a as a, <laughs> a follow-up. <laughs> An exercise for the student. Yeah. Um because there are more um ex um sections which each have their data type, um, and you can still export it into JSON. You can use the same uh, uh, things I used to make sense of it. Yeah, so in your uh, system profiler dash dash help, it says uh, under, you could just type system underscore profiler dash list data types. 
and it'll tell you all the available data types. So then that lets you start to know what you can play with. Yes. Yeah. And because I was only interested in applications, I piped it through a grab, uh, grab application. And then it turned out uh, the data type for application is called SP applications data type. Okay. Okay. So you needed to do that in order to figure out what data type is associated with something called an application. Yes. Yeah. Would that work grep for accessibility or no, that wouldn't make any sense, would it? Because accessibility well, is kind of a whole category. Uh, yeah. But I mean, uh, you could try and see if you get something that looks, that makes sense. And if it doesn't, <laughs> well, you have to look at the entire list. Okay. But we have access to that. Okay, so you typed in system underscore profiler dash list data types, pipe it to grep and look for, quote, application. And that told you the, the name of that data type, this SP yes. applications data type. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what do so we do if, from there? Well, if, if you go on and you type system profiler followed by this data type, so it, system dash profiler of underscore profiler, SP applications data type, you'll get a similar output, but just the applications. And in my case, um, it had text edit, time machine, and activity monitor. And it tells you the version, where you got it from, uh, when it was last uh, modified, what kind it was, whether it was signed by Apple, um, and the location on your system. Okay, so you're listing those three just to be brief. Obviously, I found a lot more than that, but those are the three you've talked about in the show notes. Okay, yeah. and under kind, that's where you see things like universal or we'll get into yeah. what else, the other the yeah. other kinds. Okay, yeah. so we're on the right track. Now, what do we do? Well, the first thing you do is you, uh, you add the dash JSON uh, parameter. And you pipe it into, um, or not pipe, you Send. redirect it into an adjacent file, uh, into a file. And mine is called applications.json. Okay, so system and underscore profiler, then this data type, dash da JSON, saying what, that's the file type we want to send it to. And then we're going to say the greater than symbol, and you called it applications.json and slapped it on the desktop. Because we all have yeah. one of those. <laughs> we all have one of those, and it's easily visible and easy to reach uh, if you want to work with it. Yeah. Okay. So now you have you now you have the information, and if you would look at the information, um, then you would get an entire um, uh, you you get um, uh, a dictionary. Well. It, yeah, you get a dictionary, and in there, there is only one element called SP applications data type, which has an array of dictionaries, one for each application. Okay. I, okay. I didn't write it down in the in the. Oh, I'm I'm looking at it right now, but yeah, it's got uh, underscore name colon and then the name of the file, but I've got a bunch of goofy looking stuff. It looks like they're little scripts I've written and stuff in here too, but like underscore yeah, name yeah. colon calculator, for example. Yeah. At first I thought it's only the installed applications, but later on I think that can't be possible because it's found applications in my download folder, in, uh, in some archive folders. So it's probably everything that was once installed or is still installed. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. That's very interesting. Okay. So, um, um, obviously, we're going to uh, want to mess with this. We can't take a JSON file and be happy, right? We got to go in with JQ and massage it. Yes, we have. And uh, uh, um. I started off on the command line with a with a simple uh, JSON filter, and then I thought, well, no, let's do what Bart told us or taught us, and you, and you put it in a file. And the nice thing about putting it in a file is uh, a you can reuse it, and b you can mess with it much easily <laughs> <laughs> than you can on the command line. And C, you can put comments in to tell future you, why did I write it that way? What was I trying to do? Yes, yes. 
And um, so um, I started off with a comment, and that's what you should always do to help future you. <laughs> and um, um, so that's what in that's what's in there. And you can also see um, the only actual JQ code is to take off um, the SP applications data type um, uh, element and just take out the, the array of uh, dictionaries. So all you've got is uh, your entire query is square bracket dot SP application data type, double square bracket, and then another square bracket. So we're going to get an yeah. array that will have all of the uh, all of the elements that we want to have, and it does it no longer says SP applications data type, and yes. then has all the dictionaries under it. True. Okay. True. So we end up with a with an array of dictionaries, and if you look uh, at the uh, at at the dictionaries, you see the same uh, elements that are there um, when you just did the system profiler. Um, okay. Uh, on the command line. Only they have, um, some have weird names or like underscore name. Why would you in? <laughs> why is it an underscore? <laughs> yeah, why an underscore? And then arch uh, underscore kind, which is just the kind of architecture. Um, we could rename that as well and obtain from, okay, that's rather straightforward. And the signed by, as uh, nice as it is, it's not really useful for um, our purpose, so we might skip it. Um, version is nice if you want to, but I wasn't really interested in in the exact version, or maybe I did. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you can. I think you keep uh, last modified in your script, and so that at least tells you, you know, if it says two thousand two, you know, you might want to go get a more recent version. True. Yeah. Or okay. it was a remnant of something that you don't use anymore. Sure, And sure. you can get rid of it. Yeah. So, um, like you said, there is a lot of glob. And um, so the first thing we do is we are going to filter out some um, applications that are not really uh, of interest to us. Oh, like, like where? Where would those be? Like, for example, everything in system applications are applications already installed by Apple, like mail and contacts, et cetera. I've always so thought can... that was fascinating because if you look in the GUI of the finder, you find mail in the list of applications, but that's not where it really is. It's really in no. slash system slash applications, yes. which is yeah. kind of mind bendy. I thought about doing a tiny tip on that on uh, for the Nocilla cast, and I thought, boy... I don't know why anybody needs to know that, but it's just kind of a fun fact to know and tell, like show off what a nerd you are for, or something for knowing it. I think you already did. Did I? Oh, I thought yes. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> that happens a lot. Because that's how I know I knew. <laughs> oh, okay. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I had a good memory, I'd be a genius. Okay. So um, everything in system library is already pre-installed. So uh, okay. I'm interested in that. Okay. Uh, if you use Homebrew, um, there are different ways of um, figuring out what applications you've installed. And Homebrew has moved its location. So that's why I included slash user slash local slash seller and slash opt slash Homebrew. Okay. So now um, what she's walking through is uh, a series of filters that are all pipe select dot path pipe contains, and then wherever it is she's looking at, and then you're saying pipe not, meaning don't give me those. So why wouldn't you want to also see your, your homebrew stuff? No, it, um, so what it does, it says select a path, for example, select a path that contains system applications, mm -hmm. and then do the reverse. So any path that contains system applications will not be Selected. That's where the not be selected not will not be kept. 
Yes. Right. But so why would you want to not keep your homebrew stuff? Wouldn't you want to be able to see your homebrew stuff? Yeah, but there is a different way uh, using brew uh, to figure out your applications. Okay. Okay. I might still, maybe what I'd want to do is the opposite filter that says only contain, get that. And then I want to see a list of what I have installed so I can think about it and, and put it in Excel and play with it. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, but you opted to take it out. Okay. Yes, because, um, and maybe that's something for another episode or, or just a, a private chat or whatever. Maybe that, because, a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I figured out because, um, well, actually, uh, uh, I migrated um, everything from Homebrew. Uh, because it was um, it was no uh, uh, it was not considered application, so th- everything was was copied, uh, and then oh. I installed uh, Brew again, and then it started um, uh, throwing errors all around. Um, and when I looked it up, they say, "Well, we changed the location, mm-hmm. and here's the recipe you have to follow to figure out." Um, what you installed on your uh, in your old location and how you have to install it again in the new location, and that's just a brew command line um, okay. statement. Okay. Uh, and that gives you a brew file, and you can reinstall that brew file. So that's why I thought. And the brew file says install this, install that, install. So it's it's okay. a very nice and clean file. But the way you did this, you brought everything you ever installed with Homebrew over. And maybe there's stuff you didn't need that you could have abandoned before you moved it if you knew that it was there. Um, yeah. Um, um, it's just I a think, choice, right? Yeah, it's a choice. I think it came along with Migration Assistant because Migration Assistant, the only thing you can say is do this or don't do it. There is no do this but not that and yeah yeah so so the homebrew applications just look like files to migration yeah. assistant okay i see what you're saying yeah okay all right so, so you got rid of things in system library system applications your homebrew stuff um uh and then library application support yeah um it, i i looked at um i looked at the uh, entire list and um, I, I saw all kinds of little helper apps that were part of uh, some application. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, if I install the application, they will probably reinstall all the helper apps. I don't have to worry about those. Those probably all got migrated anyway, didn't they? Um, well, if they are... Um, if they are in my library, my my home library, uh, they would. If they are, maybe they are also in the root library. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're you're not in Tilda library. You're in library, big girl library. No, 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 no. Uh, both, because I use contains on the on the path. Both will match. Oh, so she did con- uh, path contains slash library slash application yeah. support, which will get top level library and tilde slash library. Yes. Okay, but but again, those would have moved with migration assistant. Um. The y- yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I don't know why they wouldn't. Um. Actually, I can I can I can tell you they did because uh, this is the first machine I've done migration assistant on. In like a decade, I will never do it again. Way harder to me than doing a clean install because I didn't have control. But uh, one of the things in here in uh, tilde slash library slash application support is OBS Studio. And I haven't played with that in a decade. So mm-hmm. that's that got that's being migrated with my data. Yeah. Okay, I, so we I don't need to see it. it in this listing that we're doing because no. we don't have any no. control over it. And then library yeah. containers and then dot app slash contents you took out. Yeah, um, uh, a, any uh, Mac app is actually a directory. Right. And it contains uh, a directory called contents. And within that contents, there can also be helper apps. And oh. so they would, co- would 
come up in this list, but you don't need to worry about them because if you want to install the application, you will get those as well. So rather seeing, um, uh, in my case, um, I can't remember anything, but say, for example, one password has a few helper apps or a keyboard maestro as a keyboard maestro engine and a keyboard maestro manager or whatever. Sure. And they will probably be in the contents of this app. But you really only care about the top level app. It's either going to yes. bring it all with it or not, depending on what you do. Yeah. So let me yeah. guess, did you go through and run this without taking any of these out and go, oh my gosh, that's a bunch of glop I don't want. And then yeah. you just kept looking for things you didn't want and kept adding these. Yeah. So yes. we could start with your script the way it is and either do what you did exactly or eliminate some of these lines or maybe we're looking at stuff like i know i don't care about this kind of stuff we can add our own lines but you've given yeah. us kind of yeah. the formula to follow to be able to yeah. eliminate a, cer a certain category yeah. thing yeah i was thinking about for example um i use parallels with um with a virtual windows 11 uh, environment so all the applications um Bracket parallels are also listed, and I was thinking <laughs> about taking them out. But yeah, because you're either going to pick up the VM and move it, or you're not. No, I actually I had to reinstall because oh. um, uh, Windows had to be an ARM Windows. Oh yeah, rather than an Intel Windows. Oh, okay, that's going to be a whole other discussion to talk about how well that went. That'd be fun. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, after you applied all these filters to eliminate all these categories, uh, what's what's the output look like now? Pretty much the well, same, but just different apps now? Yeah, different apps. For example, I use BB Edit and I use iTerm, and then you can see um, that they show up um, where before you would see Apple um, applications. At the top of the list. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now you didn't like this underscore name nonsense, so you uh, decided it was time to rename things, and you do that with another filter? Yeah. Um, so basically, I just renamed every... Um, uh, well, I, I renamed uh, some of the fields, like uh, uh, underscore name became name, and arch underscore kind became arch. And I also left out the signs by, because I didn't care about those. Oh, okay. So your next filter says pipe and then squirrely bracket name colon dot underscore name, arch yeah. colon dot arch underscore kind. So whatever you yeah. put in there, you're saying assign this new name, but yeah. that's that's also filtering out everything that you didn't ask for. True. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and if you if you um add that to your uh your file. And then you run the uh, the command again. Then you can see that the output becomes much more readable. Oh yeah, at least in my opinion. <laughs> Name colon i term. Now yeah. I would have called it architecture, not arch, but that's me. But arch colon yeah. arch underscore arm underscore i six i sixty four. So we're going to deal with that yeah. stuff in a minute too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and and you kept source in there. So src colon identified underscore developer. Um, okay, that was, oh, that was obtained from, yeah, I called it source. You could yeah. have called it, um, uh, uh, it was for me, it was the, um, the source where I got the info, where I got the app. But all it says is identified developer. It doesn't really tell you where you got the app. It just tells no. you it's identified. So that way you yeah. could find screwball things that weren't signed. Is that um, why you kept that? Well, I kept it because it also says somewhere um, if it's from the Mac App Store or if it's from, oh. um, um, for example, setup. No, no, it doesn't. That one doesn't say it's setup. But this one says whether it's from the App Store or not. Oh, OK. So, yeah, I see Mac App Store on some of mine and iOS App Store on some of mine. Oh, wow. Yeah, because so I run a few apps that are. It's like an iPad app that's, or, or yeah, an iPad app that's allowed to run on the Mac, but it's one of those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll be fun to look for. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing uh, we want to do is re 
sorry, rename uh, some of the uh, architect uh, names because they are uh, rather confusing. Okay. And um, so what you can do is you can create a little uh, function in JQ, which starts with dev and then the name of the function. In my case, it's called arch type. You would probably call it architecture type. So def is define, like def yeah. I'm defining a, a a terminal or a parameter. What do you call that? And then, no, the name of the well, def is is you, you you're defining a function. Um, oh, and okay, or a filter. Maybe you can call it a filter in JQ terms. Okay. Um, and then you get the name, um, followed by a, a column. And then below and indented, you get the sort of the, the, the source code for this fun. Well, I'll call it a function. Maybe it's called filter. I, I haven't looked up the JQ lingo. Um, so, and this one basically says if, uh, this, um, which is, uh, uh, the element that is, or the value that is piped in, uh, if it's arch underscore arm underscore I-64, then it's a universal app. Oh, and, okay. And then you can go on with arch uh, I-64, which is Intel, and arch iOS, which is iOS. Okay. So how did you know those were those? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I-64 is, 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 uh, is an Intel 64 app. Uh, processor so that i knew um and the other one i guessed that it was universal but i just opened uh system in information and i looked up the app and i looked what uh what definition that apple used okay. and it was universal okay all right so and then our arch ios yeah. is i was really confused about that one yeah. Um because I thought um I installed uh one password and it said Apple Silicon um when I downloaded it and then I looked here and then it said arch underscore iOS. And when I looked it up in uh um system information, um I think it said no, it didn't say iOS. Let me let me check. <laughs> uh, we have to check. Um, so, okay. So, yeah. in any case, you determined what each one of those was, and you were able to assign a yeah. a more yeah. human readable name, so we wouldn't have to yeah. go look up what Arch underscore iOS meant. So, what I is an iOS up. app? <laughs> what does it mean uh, to be an iOS app? I think. It's actually what you just said, an iPad app that can also run on a Apple Silicon Mac. Okay, that would that would make sense because all the ones that came in saying architecture iOS, Overcast, Call Sheet, Retouch, Channels, Watch Shot, and Ambient Weather Network. I don't know about those last three, but I know Overcast, Call Sheet, and Retouch. I know I'm using the iOS version. Okay, and uh, I installed. That's what why I, I was confused. I installed. One password, and it said Apple Silicon on on the download page. Right. Um, but if if I look in system information, I just checked. It's actually the uh, the kind is labeled as iOS. So, oh, that so. Yeah, that and it's an electron app, which means it's not really an iOS app either. It's a web app, but that's not coming yeah. through in system information, huh? Yeah, so what well, they call it iOS. So anyway, um, so if you want to use this filter, you can change uh, the line with the arch um, and then between brackets, the dot arch underscore kind, which is still the same uh, um, element that you used before. But now you pipe it through this arch type filter and the output now gives you, uh, for iTerm, gives you universal. And BBEdit is also universal. And on my old machine, one password was Intel. Ah, 
So that's perf- a perfect example of you found something. I don't want to move that version. True. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in hindsight, and we discussed it, there are, of course, more uh, kinds. Uh, so I just expanded the, um, the, the arch type filter and added arch arm for uh, Apple Silicon, uh, arch web for web app. And arch other, and then I just called it other. I don't oh, know. Oh, so what it... some did come in as arch web. That's interesting. Let me see which ones those are. You Copilot, Perplexity, and two apps that I wrote. And they are okay. web apps. Oh, and actually, yeah. so is Copilot and Perplexity. Yeah. yeah, so those are apps where I went up and I said, yeah, add to doc, and now I've got a web app. It's just a oh. web page. Oh, wow. But I my two apps, Time Shifter Clock and Time Adder, are both just web apps. And so, but I want them to be an app in my dock and available as a regular application. So that's what, that's, that's a good example, Arch Web. Yeah. Okay. Actually, so. we could, we could call it Web App. Yeah. That's what I did. Uh, no, it came through as Arch underscore Web. Yeah. But, um, oh, um, yeah. Uh, after your and uh, our discussion, um, I added these lines. Ah, so probably your version uh, of the application uh. script isn't up to date yet. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, yeah, she's been modifying things while I've been sleeping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> taking advantage of the time zone change. Okay. Um, all right. So now you've got all these elif or an if and an elif, 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 and you're basically taking everything you've learned and making it more human readable. Yes. That's a nice then, way to do it. I like that. Yeah. So, um, um, and then I thought, okay, I want to know which one come from the Mac App Store. And you can find that in the original dot obtained underscore from field. Oh. Um, which is in my version renamed to SRC. Okay. Uh, but I didn't want to, um, actually, I wasn't really interested, now that I think of it, I'm not really interested in everything that is in uh, dot .obtained from. Um, I just left the, 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 the element in there. But I thought, what if I figure out um, uh, if it contains Mac App Store, I make a new uh, element in this dictionary um, that contains this only Mac App Store. So okay. if you if you take the the dot obtained underscore from and you pipe it through contains Mac underscore app underscore uh, store, you get a true or false. Okay, so now I see your table shows like one password. And then it says M-A-S colon false. And uh, so you're not happy with that either, though, I bet. (laughs) No, no, no. Uh, I also want, I have a a setup subscription. So I want also to figure out if there are setup. uh, Yeah. Oh, I love this because one of the things I have in my pivot table or in my, I'm sorry, in my mind map is, is it from the Mac App Store? So then I can just go boom, 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 and and fly through them uh, to do the install. But this so would let same. me know up front, what do I have from there and, and make sure I'm not missing any. Because I, I can't tell you how many times I go off and I download it from the developer and I'm like, why are you asking me for a license key? Oh, shoot. I forgot to go to the Mac App Store. Yeah. 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 So um, I did a similar thing. Uh, if it's from setup, you'll uh, it, it'll be in uh, application setup. Oh, um, sure. So if you, uh, so I just, filtered on the path if it contains slash setup slash um then it should be a sled up, a sl- um setup application okay. uh-huh i'm starting to stumble <laughs> and um so you get mas for mac app store and you get setup for uh, anything from setup and then it gives you true and false whether it's uh, in setup or not and, okay. Um, 
uh, but because I was thinking of, I want this in, for example, an Excel spreadsheet, um, I don't want the, the words true or false. Yeah, that's not useful at all. <laughs> no. Visually, so, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, so I thought, what if I change that as well? So I made another filter. Actually, I copy and paste it and I modified it. <laughs> thanks to uh, Stack Overflow. Um, so the filter is called uh, YN. For yes, no. And yes. And it, and it simply says, if, um, if it's true as in Boolean or true as in string, then use the string yes. Otherwise, uh, use an empty string. Oh, wait a minute. You just so traded true for yes. How does that buy you anything? Um, it, it wasn't really true for yes. It was, um, so actually I, I changed it all, uh, all variations to yes for true, but for me, more importantly, false was changed to, uh, an empty string. Okay. So if you would look in, uh, in Excel in the column, you would see only the ones that were, um, you you could filter out the blanks, and then you have the um, the set. I but, could use uh, an X or whatever. But why not change true to MAS and false um, to nothing? Um, because I want to use this filter for both MAS and for setup. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So you're not done yet. Okay. I'm jumping the gun here. I'm not happy with yes. So I, this is going to come along. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you would take the, the MAS, um, where we said obtained underscore from piped to contains Mac underscore app underscore store, and then we pipe it to this, uh, YN. Okay. Then you would get an empty and the same for the setup element uh you would get empty strings if if they're not there and or and you get a yes if it is if it's there so in my example one password comes from the identified developer um so i downloaded it from um from one password itself so it's not from the mas and it's not from setup so it has blanks. It says MAS colon blank, setup colon blank. Okay. Yeah. But snippet slap comes from setup. So MAS is blank, but setup is yes. So the source still says identified developer. So I don't think identified developer tells you that you got it directly from the developer. Um, not you got that one from setup. Of, yeah. Not, not in the case from setup. Yeah. But okay. um, the other one... Um, Maybe we should see. I was more in, interested in, is it from MAS or is it from yeah. setup? Yeah. If not, then it's from the developer itself. Okay. Okay. I'm, I just want to make sure people didn't think source identified developer means that you got it directly from the developer. That's not necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. No. Okay. Okay. So now that's, again, that's going to give us Mass, okay. All right, so we get yes or no. Well, no, we get yes or blank. Sorry, yes or blank, right. Yeah. So, and I was more interested in making the no to become a blank because then visually you will you will see um, what the, um, uh, which ones are marked in this special column. Okay. So, and then um, I thought, why not sort? And if I sort uh, on last modified, I get the oldest ones at the top and the most recent ones at the bottom. Okay. So we can pipe the entire um, array because we still have an array of dictionaries and we can pipe it through sort underscore by uh, and sort it on the last modified. Um, okay. All right. Element. And if you, did I check it? 
Oh, I didn't give any output. Um, well, that's okay. You- we know we have an array of dictionaries at this point, but that's not yeah. really where we want to end up. We want to end up with a table, right? Yes, true. And so what what did now, you want in your table? Sorry? Well, what did you want the table to look like? Actually, I wanted every um every element. Um I, So th- so the it, field names it, like as column headers and then yes. you were going to export it to what format? CSV. Oh, okay. Okay. Which All right. you can just import in any spreadsheet uh, application. Right. So, credit where credit is due. I found this on Stack Overflow, but I had to figure out how it works. <laughs> this so, is just this last piece you're talking about now? Yes. Okay. Um, because what we are going to do now is we have to this array of uh, dictionaries, and we want to convert it to an array of arrays what each array um, is one of the dictionaries um, with all the elements uh, as, as an array. And the first array should be the headers, so the elements of the... Okay, so the keys, the keys in the original dictionary would be the... Yes. So the keys are repeated in every one of these uh, applications that you found. And those yes. keys become the the column headings. Yes, true. So, um, can I read yeah. the command the way you've written it? Yep. She's piping it to map keys, piping to add, piping to unique. Uh, we're missing a parenthesis there because I see a. Uh, oh no no sorry. She map. opens parentheses, map parentheses keys, pipes it to add, pipes it to unique. Close parentheses. And then as dollar calls, pipe dollar calls. Can you yeah, so, walk through that? So, How does that work? Well, if you if you do the map uh, of the keys, you only get the keys. Okay. Um, and you get them as uh, an array of arrays. So you you pipe it through add, and then of course because uh, what does add, what does add do? Uh, add arrays together. But all we've got is a list of keys at this point. Yeah, no? but they are an array, or they are arrays of arrays. Okay. I can't remember which one it was. But um, if you pipe it through add, you will get one array. But uh, because the keys of every object is in there, you will get, uh, for example, MES and setup. you will get them multiple times. Oh, okay. That's why, well, that's, so that's why you're going right. through unique. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then we define that as a variable called dollar calls, as in columns. Okay. That makes sense and up then, to there, but then you pipe it to dollar calls. Um, to show, to actually show the content of the. Oh, content. okay. <laughs> okay. Right, right, right. Okay. So, and then if, if you do that, you will get the output below, and you will you will get an array of all the the keys that were in an object. Okay, so she's got this array that says mass comma setup column arc comma last modified comma and on. Okay, yeah, and they also sort the keys, oh. so they are not in the original uh, order, hmm. uh, which well, if that was the worst problem, okay. <laughs> um, so now we have the columns. We can do a similar thing with the rows. Wait and a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. Back up. Oh, no, they're not sorted. M, it's M for mass, then S for setup, then arch is, is alphabetically should have been sooner. No, uh, it's uh, case sensitive. Oh, stop. Jeez, now Jill of Kent's going to send me another email. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, so arch, last modified, name, path, source, version. Those are all lowercase, so mass and setup are first. Oh, man. That would make me want to write it lowercase when I define that key. <laughs> what? Okay. You, you now know how it works, so you can modify it. To <laughs> or at least I'll lead in caps all of them. This is make, this going to make yeah. me crazy. Okay. Now, actually, I'm glad we went through that because it really re- reminds me that 
I don't understand how anything gets sorted in these languages, but okay. All right. Okay, so we now go on, and then, uh, so we do another map. And Wait, so we've got map, the keys. We've got to get all of the values in, right? Yes. So we take the object, and we define it as a row, uh, and then we, we um, pipe the columns, which are then the input for the map that comes at the last um, where, the, where they take the, the value of the row with that column. So in total, it says map, open bracket, dot, as dollar row, pipe it through calls, pipe it through to map, open bracket, dollar row, square bracket open, dot, square bracket closed, close bracket, close bracket. Wow. In a million years, well, and absolutely not right now after you've explained it, I would never understand that, but I bet it works, so I'm good. Yeah, so that's what, I used it and I said, it works, but how does it work? <laughs> so I had to explain to myself and figure out what happened before I could actually put it in, because I thought, I can't put it in and then wait for the questions that you will have, and I can't answer them. <laughs> That's the problem yeah. with teaching. You have to understand what you're talking about. From my see, that's yeah. why my job's easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so, so the last you thing you've got to do is you got to get it to CSV, and you do that with the at CSV filter at the end, right? Yeah. So um, the the two map lines, one for the columns and one for the rows, uh, you wrap it in brackets, and you um, expand the array because it's an array of arrays, and then you pipe it through the dollar CSV. Uh, at CSV. Uh, so, yes, at CSV. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then the output becomes something like here, where it uh, gives you all the information. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks a lot like CSV. <laughs> so the thing. only thing you have to do now is pipe it uh, or redirect uh, this output to a CSV file or a file named uh, whatever uh, with a D CSV extension. And then you are good to go to use it um, in your Excel sheet. This is really cool. So I haven't used your latest version, uh, but I'm going to tell you what I did with it was I opened it up in Excel and this works in uh, numbers. It works in sheets. Uh, find the button that says make us make a pivot table out of it, because what you get basically is this nice table that's got Mac App Store and then set up and the architecture last modified name, blah, blah, blah. It's got all that in there. But the thing I love about using a pivot table, and, and uh, I, I've gotten Bart to finally start using these, is I think about a pivot table as a way to take data and turning it in, into information. So you could take this and you could create a filter across the top and you could say, okay, only show me Mac App Store, only show me the, the architecture that's Intel, blah, blah, blah. You could do all of those. But if you create a pivot table, it allows you to then query down a little deeper and you can have separate tables with the information you want. So if you simply say, I want to have a pivot table and um, let's say we want to look at the architecture, it's going to it's going to bring up this blank thing over on the left and it's going to look silly. And over on the right, you've got a list of the field names. So you'll see Mac App Store, Setup, Architecture, blah, 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 all those listed as field names. And then four little boxes below that, filters, columns, rows, and values. Ignore everything but rows and values. If you just click the checkbox next to architecture, it'll put a row in that says architecture, and it's going to say, like in my case, it just says architecture grand total 264. Well, that doesn't do me any good. I don't, or no, actually, it just says, uh, I forget what it said without that. Let me let me get rid of this. Uh, remove this. Oh, now how do I get rid of one? Uh, remove field. Here we go. It just gives me the row label. So it just says architecture arm, architecture other, architecture web, Intel, iOS, and universal. That's not very useful. If you take architecture and then drag it down to values, now it by default will be the count of whatever that value was in the row. So for all of the row labels, now I can see how many arm I have, how many other, how many web, how many Intel, iOS, and universal. So I can see I have 206 universal, I've got four web apps, and I can see it in that nice little table. 
At this point, I'm going to say, well, wait a minute. I want to know what these web apps are. And all I have to do is double click on the web apps. And now I've got a separate tab in my spreadsheet that shows me all of my web apps. And that's how when you asked like, well, which ones are the web apps? I was able to go, all I did was double click and I had the answer to that question. So again, wow. taking data and turning it into information. And yeah. I find that a really useful uh, way to uh, explain things. And I, I'll put a that's screenshot great. of what my pivot table looks like in, in the show notes. I don't know whether we yeah. want a whole pivot table lesson, but you can, I'll show how it was created and what you can get out of it. I, I'm, this is new for me because I know how to make pivot tables and I use them uh, very, very often. But being able to click on them and then just get an information with just that information, I didn't know didn't that. Didn't know it would do that. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. And yep. they actually come out in, in, um, in uh, Excel now, the latest version of Excel, the uh, uh, Office 365 version, it actually made those filtered uh, tables. I didn't tell it to do that, but it it uh, automatically made it uh, like uh, old people like me would call it a green bar report. It's uh, alternating colored rows, and it's got little filter things at the top, so you could filter it further if you wanted to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I know how to make a, a filtered uh, uh, columns in uh, in Excel. The, yeah, but that's what what I used. That's why I wanted um, uh, um, empty uh, cells for the um, not applicable or the faults for the Mac app and the setup. Oh, okay. So I could filter out the blanks. And then ah, I would be but now, I can, now you'll be able to do it this way. It's just, yeah. it's so automatic. And I mean, it is literally, you have to say, give me a pivot table, click on architecture, and then drag our architecture down to sum of values and you will have what I just described. You will already okay. be done. You don't, and the thing I always tell people about pivot tables is just play with it. That you can't break anything with a pivot table. You, you're all you're doing is querying that data that's over there. And um, one thing to keep in mind is um, I'm not sure if it's still true, but at least at one time, pivot tables don't auto update. So if you were to yeah. go over and say add another column to your pivot table, or I'm sorry, to your data set, and uh, yeah. make it, you know, have I installed it yet? Yes, 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 yes. I don't think it'll show up in your pivot tables. You've got to refresh those. Uh, true. Yeah. Or uh, what I did for uh, at work, I, I wrote a little macro so that you have a button on your pivot table sheet. Oh, look at you! You can press, <laughs> 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 and um, and it also and it updates uh, everything. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in the menu. Yeah, it's in the menu. Uh, but I you know. can never find it, right? <laughs> yeah. So I made this large big button on the sheet that says renew. Because, well, actually, she also had, uh, I made multiple pivot tables on various uh, uh, sheets. Mm -hmm. So if you press that one button, uh, all the pivot tables would refresh. So Oh, nice. That's yeah. pretty cool. Need to know how to do that. Well, this is pretty <laughs> cool. What I, what I love about this is, is um, that... You could have come in and told us the entire answer, but it was clear that you were re you, what you did by the way you wrote the show notes is you're refining it, refining it, refining it. Yeah. And that gives yeah. us the that's the essence of programming by stealth, right? Is tell us how to do this, how to figure things yeah. out. Not yeah. don't give me the answer, but tell me the process that you go through to do it. And I think that's uh, I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's basically the process that I followed myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the first steps were literally what I did. Let me see if this works. Oh, this works. Let me see if I can do something more. Oh, that's nice. Okay, what now? Uh, and then I went on. And I I must confess, I looked up um, several JQ lessons from Bart to figure out how to do something. Well, I so, don't think that should be a confession. I think that should be a requirement. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do yeah. all that work for if it wasn't to give us a fantastic reference for the future? Um, yeah, true. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're done here. Uh, we only have two things left to do. Uh, one is uh, if people wanted to chat with you anywhere, is there a place you are? Are you in our... I don't think you're a big Slack person with our podfeed.com slash Slack, are you? No, every now and then I uh, I go in and check if my name is mentioned and then, okay. And scamper uh, off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we could just tell people to contact me at Allison at podfeed.com if they wanted to yeah. send you a message and I can always get it to Helma. Yeah, true. 
And then I think you need to give us our closing line. What should we do, Bart? <laughs> what should we do, Helma? <laughs> oh, well, um, can I just say happy computing? <laughs> yes, you can. All right. Thanks a lot, Helma. This was great fun. Okay. You're welcome. If you learn as much from Bart each week as I do, I'd like you to go over to lets-talk.ie and press one of the buttons over there to help support him. He does 98% of the work here. I'm just the stooge that listens to him and asks the dumb questions. If you go over to lets-talk.ie, you can support him on Patreon, you can donate via PayPal, or you can use one of his referral links. I really hope you'll go over and help him out. In the meantime, you can contact me at Podfeet or check out all of the shows we do over there over at podfeet.com. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.